All right, today we're taking a look at the uh, the flight that got Trent Palmer in trouble back in 2019 with the FAA for making some low passes over a friend's backyard um, uh, airstrip. Well, more of an improvised airstrip for RC planes. Anyways, uh, we found the lo or we have the location from the uh, the FAA report, so we we know where this friend's backyard is. Um, we're going to load over at uh, Reno Stud Airport because it's only about 10 miles away or so from the location in question. And really the idea of this whole video is there's um, uh, a lot of uh, things going back and forth. The FAA making claims, Trent um, stating his side of things, and it, it seems like there's a lot of things being called into question as far as like... Um, if making these low observation passes, what he was being cited for, were necessary to determine that this airstrip was unsuitable for landing. Um, I think finally the FAA is saying now um, that he never really needed to get that low to make that determination and that it was just sort of reckless. So, what I've done here, um, I've mapped out the location, we've got it on the GPS. So we're just going to follow it over, and I think what we're going to do is just make a few passes at varying um, altitudes and kind of see what we can see. I think I've identified um, the spot that, that he was or he was trying to land at, or looking to land at, and we're going to go at a few different altitudes. I think we're going to start at like 500 feet and 100 feet, and then right down to around 50 feet, which is really the pass that I think... Um, that caused this controversy and we're just going to see what we can see uh you know obviously i'm not in the same situation that trent was and i'm in the same plane here we're in the the freedom fox um i've got the same time of day set right around noon time is when this occurred and we know that conditions were clear so we've got it about as close as we can get um, to recreating the conditions so with that let's uh let's get going take off to the west and we're gonna turn um, we're gonna turn to the north and head over there and we're up so actually you're gonna see here momentarily um, but this is literally right in Trent's backyard I mean we're gonna fly right over his house as we uh, as we make our way over to this this uh, this landing site so the folks that uh, complained about it, or that, that lodged the complaint, um, are pretty much his neighbors. <laughs> he lives close to them, so it'd be interesting if they didn't have some prior history, I think. Just my thought. NorCal approach November, tree 18 Juliet Juliet is type 1 miles west of Kilo Romeo, Tango Sierra 5,600 feet. Request flight following. Alright, so we're off. Juliet, Juliet. Eight Juliet, Juliet, radar contact, one miles west of Kilo Romeo, Tango Sierra, 5,900 feet. Altimeter, 200, decimal, minor 2. Roger, right. eight Juliet, Juliet. <laughs> Can I get a word in edgewise, guys? That would be nice. Thank you. So ground level here is, uh, well, ground level at the, the, the site that we're going to is at about 5,150. Um, so when we get there, I'm going to descend to about 6,150. And we're going to make uh, a pass on that property and heading in the same direction he did, um, southeast, over the, the uh, backyard uh, spread there. And just see what we can see, because at 500 the FAA shouldn't really have any problem with you flying, as I understand it, at that altitude, whether you're trying to land somewhere or not. What comes into question is, when you're trying to land somewhere, obviously, you got to get a little bit lower, especially if you have to make an inspection pass. Um, so 500 is a pretty safe bet. No one can really complain about that as far as altitude goes. So we're going to come in at about, uh, again, 6150, 6150 feet. Then we're going to try 5,750, then uh, about 5,700. 5, That'll put us about 50 feet above. I think he was technically about 30 feet or so uh, was the lowest recorded height. This is kind of guesstimated because the person who, who provided evidence and lodged the complaint was really um, using like some, some security cameras that were being filmed uh, from a cell phone. 
Um, so the video evidence that we have isn't great, and then the rest of it is just kind of his testimony, which, you know, not no knock on the guy, but no one's memory of things is perfect, especially if it's something that was rather traumatic, as he claims it was. So, suffice to say, the facts aren't um, 100% uh, verifiable in that, in that regard, but this is about the best we can estimate here. So you'll probably notice we're coming right up on a location called Freedom Fox Home. That is Trent's place of residence. That is where this plane is normally parked in real life. Um, you get this airport when you buy this plane from Parallel 42, this, uh, this add-on aircraft. Um, and I have visited it. I think there are some nice videos of it online. Um, but it's a really nicely detailed kind of scenery, as Parallel 42 calls them. Parallel 42 is this interesting thing where they, they don't really sell, like, imagery, um, you know, of, of regions, like like ortho, basically, like Orbex and ortho imagery. Um, they like to make little, really localized scenes, like maybe just one little landing site or one campsite or something, but then they put a lot of stuff in it, and they model it in really high detail and high quality. So that's uh, that's one of those. And, yeah, when you buy the Freedom Fox, you get a few of those. I think Fly Eagle might be another one that's, like, little little campsite out there too. I don't know, maybe we'll maybe we'll go visit all of those one day. So I'm going to get down a little bit. It's actually before we reach this mountainside uh, in the distance, so we don't have to worry about climbing over that. And as I said, it is pretty much right in his backyard, so once we pass his house, we're pretty much going to be right up on it. So let's try to get locked in at... Uh, 6,150. Still getting used to this airplane. And it's powerful. It, it can climb out. It can really kind of just get away from you because it's it's got way more power than it probably needs. <laughs> but it's fun. Now, I'll admit, the imagery here isn't the best, the photogrammetry. Um, there's some pretty sus looking stuff like these buildings and stuff look pretty nice but then there's just something that looks like it's like a pancake on the earth you know that structure down there maybe so um you know this is about the best we can do as far as recreating the conditions and getting a view of things um but you know that's just another another reason that it's, it's not quite going to be perfect perfect analog a perfect one-to-one -one of what it was like on that day and what things looked like to trent but I don't know, maybe it'll give us an idea. Let's see, it could be kind of fun. So there's Trent's uh, residence that you would see in all his videos and stuff. The runway, got the hangar where this plane's parked. It's a really cool lot. I guess he, uh, I guess he built that place um, from, uh, I think he bought plans for it and then built it himself, him and his wife, so it's, it's pretty cool. Pretty nice little property. All right, so we're coming up on it here. Now, from what I understand, he came across um, heading southeast, so it'll become clear once we get over the, the site. Um, he was not really flying along their backyards. He was flying back and forth over the houses, if I'm, if I'm understanding all of this correctly. There were two addresses that come up a lot, 300 Desert Lane and 400 Desert Lane. I read the report, and it was pretty clear to me that 300 Desert Lane was, in fact, the location that he was attempting to land at, which is coming right up here. And 400 Desert Lane was the uh, the address of the person who um, would lodge the complaint. So we see this building with the blue pool. That, uh, that I believe... That, I believe, is 300 Desert Lane. Let's take a pause real quick. Sorry, here it is. I'm going to pause the sim. So this is it. We're flying right over. You see the pink house and the uh, yellowish kind of building next to it? That, I believe, is 300 Desert Lane. As I understand it, um, that kind of in the middle, that, that strip there, is the uh, the airstrip he was attempting to land at, the one that's kind of on a diagonal there. Mouse. Yeah. Right over here. This is what I understand was the spot that he was attempting to land at. Um, just based on the directions that were being given, the way he was flying over it, and just visually it looks like that would be the most obvious place to land. I don't think it's these outer tracks here. These look more just like, I don't know, uh, 
walking paths or riding paths or something. So what we need to do here is uh, let's come further out come further out a little bit and turn around because I believe he came from this direction. Now I believe it's also stated that you um, cannot exceed 70 knots on these low passes. Uh, that's your maximum speed, so we're well under that. Um, I, I didn't actually read what speed Trent it was estimated that he was going, but this is about right, if not a little slower even. I might have to come back and check that out. Not that it makes a difference in terms of, you know, identifying things here. Okay. All right, pink house, you see it? So if he was coming from the southeast, that would mean he would have pointed himself. He was flying pretty much directly over the spot that I had uh, that I had noted. So we're coming in at about 6,100 feet, and uh, you know I have the benefit of being able to pause just like that and get out and take a look. Trent obviously doesn't have that, um, but from up here, you know, it's still his main complaint it was uh, Trent's uh, main main reasoning for this was that he was not able to see the, um, the touchdown point. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not very obvious in here either, is it? Let's try to get a little closer here. Yeah, because it's not really a normal shaped um, runway like you would expect to find now, is it? So I can understand uh, his reasoning. It said he went out uh, over this area here, which is supposed to be uh, well to the north to turn around. And this is all BLM property out to the left here. So I think he, I think he did his, um, I think he did his turnarounds for out. So it wasn't like he was doing high banking maneuvers directly over this guy's backyard, from what I read at least. I can't imagine. So, yeah, at a hundred feet, <clears throat> where are we at? Sorry, no, at five hundred feet. Yeah, it's 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 um. It's not easy to make any real determination from that, and, and no one would really expect expect one to. So we're going to get down to 5,750 uh, 5, feet. That'll put us um, about 100 feet above. That's a little bit more reasonable in terms of being able to discern anything from the air, I think. And um, I don't know if anyone would have complained if you were 100 feet above it. but it probably wouldn't look as bad <laughs> if you're 100 feet in the air. That's, that's quite a bit of altitude. That's not like you're, it's not like you're right over someone's rooftop, you know? So let's get lined up again. <clears throat> There's the house. Just look for the pink house. That's the easiest way for me to determine it at least. Coming up on 5,750 feet here. Let's give her a little more throttle. Yeah, 100 feet close to the ground, doesn't it? <laughs> you can only imagine in real life. Um, so that's that's pretty low. Again, we're heading southeast right over right over our spot here. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I miss our spot? I don't think I did. Let's pause for a moment. I did. Our spot's right over here. Sorry, I turned too soon. That's okay. You know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna turn back a little bit. This will give us another opportunity to come back over it, but I'm gonna try to re uh, uh, actually reenact what he did here. So we're coming from, from this direction, directly over that neighbor's property. I don't know that Trent ever did that. It didn't sound like it. It sounded like he just passed overhead next door. Um, so there's the landing strip. Again, I'm outside the plane there. From inside the plane, it, it is much harder to get <clears throat> sort of picture 
of what's going on on the ground, particularly like a lot of bushes and things around here. That would that would kind of scare me a little bit. Don't know if those are there in real life. Plus, you've got some trees and stuff over there. It looks like those are awfully close to where you'd be touching down. Um, so I would feel a little weird about that. Anyways, let's let's get this properly uh, lined up here. <clears throat> about a hundred feet here. God, it sure feels, sure feels closer than a hundred feet. I'm not even sure what it's going to feel like going down to 50. Um, so pause, get out for a moment. Um, it is kind of tough to tell the gradient of this too. He said it was flat, but um, it seems like there's, it seems like it's kind of right on the top of the slope till here. So that, that's a little, a little difficult to make a determination based upon. Let's pass overhead. <clears throat> And let's pause it right there. So, <clears throat> I think our touchdown point is right there. Because I think this is going to be the end of your runway, your turnaround. I don't think you're going to want to take off this way. Could be wrong. So I would say that's probably the touchdown point. Whether he would have been able to determine that in real life, in his plane, on this day, outside of a simulator, I don't know. Um... So let's head back in. Let's try this a little bit lower here. And I don't know if I did the math wrong, but that sure felt like a lot lower than 100 feet to me. But it's kind of difficult to tell with these sort of things, but we're looking for 650, or 6, 5,650 where the ground should be right about. Uh, we might try like a 5,700 foot pass. Try that. <laughs> really have to watch for terrain out here. Even a small hill could take us out. <laughs> but it's worth remembering this is this is Trent's backyard, so he's probably pretty familiar with these areas, right? So this isn't um, this isn't exactly unfamiliar. I would say that might have been a little lower than 100 feet. That felt more like 60 or so feet, but we're going to see how close we can really get this time to it. Okay. All right, we are properly on it this time. Yeah, certainly at this level, I think you could find a touchdown point, but we are probably at the same level as uh, as Trent was, I would say. This this feels like, you figure the houses are maybe 30 feet or so in the air, and we're maybe, gosh, I don't know, maybe another 20, 30 feet above that. So I would say we're at right about 60 or so, 60 or so feet. I mean, look, I'm on this tree. <laughs> so at this level, yes, you, you can, I, I think you would be able to see the touchdown point. Yeah, we are right over this guy's home at 5,700 feet. That definitely would have gotten a call to the FAA in real life. Um, I, I want to actually go for a little bit higher pass. I want to see kind of what about 100 feet looks like, because the last two passes I felt like were 
good good bit below 100 feet, and I think 100 feet is kind of an you know a decent uh, a decent minimum to maintain rather than as ludicrously low as we were last time. So I think I'm gonna try I think I'm gonna try like 50, 800 feet instead of 5750 because I think that feels more I think that feels a little bit more like 100 feet. I know this is very scientific, but this is really just more for fun. And, and I want an excuse to do something relevant with the Freedom Fox. Especially something right in, uh, right in Reno here. Okay. Also, I think in these last couple of passes we were coming at it more, f more from the east side. Um, it was more of a southeast, cause, which would make sense, because I think he was a little more lined up with the runway when he was making his passes, whereas I was crossing it at a diagonal. Okay, let's get down a little bit here. I don't know. This could all be BS. Uh, this is just my amateurish attempt at doing doing something, trying to recreate something that I'm interested in. You know, sort of like how those people recreate, you know, the air crash investigations to see what went wrong. I kind of feel like I'm doing a similar thing here. Not, not that this is necessarily anything went wrong, but just to, you know, recreate something that's kind of cool to you in real life. It's kind of the special thing about simulators. All right, we're locked in at 5,800 feet here. And yeah, let's pause it real quick. Uh, that's interesting. So I feel like I am a little bit... Uh, still doesn't really... This is probably about 100 feet, honestly. This this is probably about 100 feet. Um, now, he would have been coming more from the left. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to go into drone mode. I think that's the most obvious thing at this point. Let's try that. If I can do it, I may not be able to do that. Uh, let's see here. Cameras... Oh, you know what? When I do external, I lose everything because <laughs> I'm in VR, right? Okay, you know what? We can do with this. So I think this would have been more the direction he was coming in at, which was pretty much uh, right over, right over the runway here. But it is difficult to determine a touchdown point, isn't it? I think. Well, I think, yeah, yeah, at 100 feet, this is tricky. Whether he should have even attempted something lower than this, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel like I would get in to take a closer look because it doesn't look not viable, but you have these trees to the right here. That makes me a little nervous. It is a little tough to see um, where, yeah, where a good touchdown point might be for the run out at the end of the runway there. Um, but, you know... So I'm not saying that, you know, what the FAA is saying is valid or invalid. We definitely proved that 500 feet is not anywhere near enough, and I think even 100 feet is, is at this at this level, it is a little tricky to make a determination if landing is uh, safe here. It was definitely easier to see at 30 feet. I mean, I could see what looked like a touchdown point, whether it's a good idea to go for it or not. I don't, I don't know. I guess it's probably not. Trent decided it wasn't in that case. Um, yeah, at 100 feet, that would be hard to tell. So I think the only thing left to do here is to try to land it. I'm going to I'm gonna come back around one more time because I'm, you know, I want to set myself up a little bit. But let's see if we can, let's see if we can land it safely. Oops. So yeah, I don't know, man. It's um, it's an interesting one. I mean, uh, you know, I can I can see where where it just seems like the FAA is throwing BS at this. Um, but their argument, as I understand it, is it seems like it keeps changing. 
Um, but now it seems to be that their argument is that it wasn't necessary to get as low as he did to make that determination, which is a really subjective thing to think about it. Um, you know, what might what might seem like a, a, something relatively safe to somebody at 100 feet, someone who has more familiarity with this area, would it would be different for someone who didn't, right? Um, someone's appetite for risk would probably be different. Um, someone's familiarity with the airplane, someone who's less confident or less experienced in it, that would make a very big difference. So I think that's a pretty subjective thing to try to prove, that you should have known from above a certain height that this wasn't a suitable spot for landing. I think that's a pretty difficult argument to make, personally. I think their first argument was that this wasn't a suitable place for landing at all. Um, but I don't th think there's really a hard set of qualifications that they could back that up with. I think they tried to say, like, well, there was no windsock, there were no lights on the runway. Um, I guess the interesting thing about that is, one, it's daytime, so you wouldn't know if there were lights or not, maybe. That guy's got a lot of cars. Um, and two, you probably wouldn't know if there were a windsock even from the hundred feet or so that we were at. You would have to get lower on these observation passes to even determine that, I think. Okay. Let's, uh, let's throw flaps here. Our spot and I don't think I'm gonna make it nope <laughs> okay <laughs> Trent you probably made a good call <laughs> now I'm sure he's much more skilled flying this in real life than I am in the sim but uh nope I went right over the end of that runway <laughs> and flying straight over it the only thing I can think is maybe I was coming at it from the wrong direction but I think it said he was heading in a southeastern direction um yeah that was probably a good call man <laughs> anyways uh, i don't know what determination you can really make from things like this but i think i think you can probably say that you know getting low to this spot to make any sort of determination is probably necessary whether he was in the right to do it i guess that'll play out but anyways well, i hope this was interesting